National UFO Reporting Center has released really interesting information about the global distribution of UFOs. So let's talk about it. Get in here. This is Jack with Cosmic Road. I talk about UFOs and the paranormal. Please hit like and subscribe and let me know what you think in the comments below. Okay, let's just get right to it. Uh, global distribution of UFO sightings, 1910 to 2013. Uh, where are you most likely to see a UFO? More importantly, where are they most likely to see you? Thankfully, the National UFO Reporting Center in New Fork have diligently compiled and curated a data set of over a century of global UFO sightings. The data has been processed, cleaned, and uploaded uh, by, uh, I'm not going to be able to say the name, Timothy Renner, I think is all run together, at Data World. Uh, the full data set is extremely detailed with uh, type of sighting, duration, latitude and longitude, and many other features included. There are many questions to ask of the data. As an initial offering for weird data science, though, we will feed this data set into R and get a feel for the global distribution of sightings in the data set. Uh, the full code is at the bottom. Okay, um, let's see. That is what it looks like. That is what they are finding in uh, New Fork, is this global, global distribution. Obviously, United States is extremely hot, uh, according to what they are finding. Now, it's interesting that they, the UFOs seem to observe uh, national borders, right? I mean, just look at that clear delineation there. So I don't think this is an accurate data set at all. And we'll get into that uh, in, you know, why that might be the case. But yeah, I mean, Europe, uh, you know, Australia, uh, you know, what, what we might call, you know, uh, developed countries um, and, you know, major cities are, are, are obviously hot spots uh, according to what they're getting, according to the, their information. Uh, what can we tell immediately? Firstly, there is a clear preference among UFOs to descend on the United States, although Europe and in particular the United Kingdom receive their fair share of ET visitations. The rest of the world is far from ignored, but our best hope of making contact would definitely seem to be in those two countries, according to this uh, uh, blog. Now, I don't think that's the case at all. I mean, uh, yeah, and, and we'll, this is a scientific article actually written on the, uh, in part on the global distribution of uh, UFO sightings, and uh, they uh, looked at the New Fork data a final issue we consider is that these reported cases require knowledge of New Fork and access to communications. The authors found the website and organization while searching for data. Some may find the website while searching for an organization to report to. Still, there is likely bias in who has knowledge of this resource, since it is not widely advertised. In all, we posit that this data set has value in understanding these citing reports, that either this indicates people are seeing things they can't explain, or that they don't want to explain with more logical explanations, or this indicates where people are thinking more about UAPs. Both are important and have physical, social implications. The article goes on and it's, it's interesting. I mean, it's kind of dry. For questions two and three, there are credibly identifiable patterns to these citing reports, and these patterns relate to environmental characteristics. The explanatory variables are intended to represent both one you get the point. I'll link to it, uh, and you can read the full article at your leisure. It does have some interesting things to say, and it takes UFO sightings seriously, if, of course, very scientifically. Um, what's interesting about this, uh, just looking at the, the United States sightings, since that's where most of the sightings are, um, uh, from, from New Fork, uh, is that there's a lot of, uh, there's more sightings in the west of the United States but not in California, which is interesting. If we assume that most sightings uh, reports here are representative of true sightings that people determine to be unidentified, then our results have interesting implications. Our model shows that the majority of standardized sighting reports 
are in the western parts of the U.S. and in the very northeast. We hypothesize that the higher rate of western sightings could be due to, one, the physical geography of the west, i.e. the lack of vegetative canopies in wide open spaces, two, cultures of outdoor activity, three, cultures of a paranormal ideation. Uh, you know, impacts of Area 51, Roswell, New Mexico. There are also some isolated counties throughout the rest of the country that warrant further investigation. But yeah, uh, California actually had uh, uh, fewer sightings, which surprised me. Um, but let's just get back to the whole global idea. As you can see, you know, South America, for example, nothing, right? Just a few little spots here and there. But we know that South America, and in particular Peru, are huge hotspots and have been historically for you know a long time. Uh, so what's going on there? And look at look at Africa. Africa is just totally blank for the most part. Uh, is Africa really uh, you know uh, does it really have that few sightings? And obviously there's the aerial school incident. Uh, there's a whole book written about UFOs in Africa by Cynthia Hind. Uh, there's a, a Wikipedia page about various UFO incidents in Africa. Obviously, not uh, you know uh, you know as as many as in as in the U.S. Um, you know uh, that we know about. I again, I don't know if they you know, uh, call up MUFON or, or New Fork to report these sightings uh, in out, you know, outside of the U.S. Uh, but Africa has had many, many, um, you know, long-standing uh, UFO contacts. Uh, you know, I, I did a, a report recently on skull binding uh, and how it was a global phenomenon uh, in South America, in Africa, in France, in Australia, King Tut's family in Egypt seems to have practiced uh, skull binding. And, you know, uh, the only explanation I can, I can come up with for this very unique uh, uh, phenomenon is, is that they uh, may, may have had some interactions with beings, right? And they were trying to emulate the beings, maybe even emulate their abilities. Maybe skull binding, uh, you know, uh, was thought to ha do something, you know, give them abilities in so somehow. Now, or maybe that's just the cargo cult mentality. You know, if we make ourselves look like these beings, we can we can do what they can do. Uh, but either way, to me, this global phenomenon of skull binding seems to indicate some interactions with beings that may have had elongated heads. See, for example, the Paracas skulls. Uh, but Africa most certainly practiced skull binding, and uh, that uh, tells me that it's, it's likely that they were experiencing contact, just like in South America. So why are we seeing this big blank uh, in Africa? And, and I think that's, again, because of, uh, you know, everybody, you know, this is the new fork, right? Uh, and it's, it's only going to be, uh, you know, it's, it's the National UFO Reporting Center. It's not necessarily the International uh, UFO Reporting Center. And uh, so the, the results seem very skewed and, you know, very, uh, you know, centered on the U.S. in Europe. And, you know, that's unfortunate because it doesn't give us an accurate glimpse of, of the reality of the UFO presence on Earth. This seems to indicate that they're only interested in technology. Um, and, and while there is some, some uh, you know, uh, recent uh, uh, studies that have shown or, you know, seem to indicate there may be less activity in places like Africa, you know, this is Courtney, uh, Courtney Brown uh, saying as much. They're not equally present globally. I just got back from Africa. I was trying to shoot them in Kenya. I shot for five days. I got one UFO. They're not, I, I thought they were traveling so fast they can cross the country in like a second. 20,000 miles an hour is fast, folks. So I just assumed they'd be everywhere on the opposite side of the planet as well. So I went there to see, I got one UFO. So they're not. Well, I wouldn't, I wouldn't say that they get less just on the basis of one trip. Uh, but that's, that's interesting, right? Um, but I, I don't trust that, uh, that information. 
um, you know, that, you know, uh, places outside the U.S. in Europe would have less sightings. We know for a fact that South America, for example, is a hotspot. So we really need, you know, better reporting uh, on this. You know, we need to encourage people outside of, uh, you know, what you might call developed countries to uh, report these sightings and, um, you know, get a more accurate picture of the totality uh, of the UFO presence on Earth. And if it turns out that there are fewer UFOs uh, in places like Asia or Africa or South America, uh, you know, that would be very interesting, right? And, and that might tell us something. We know that they are attracted to technology and, you know, they're Air shows, for example, seem to draw their attention. Uh, nuclear uh, facilities seem to draw their attention. But we also know that that's not necessary to draw their attention. Otherwise, you know, the Native Americans of North America, you know, peoples of Australia, peoples of Africa, peoples of South America, uh, would not have been historically interacting uh, with beings. So... Um, you know, that they are interested in more than technology, but by finding out what does draw their attention and, and why, that will tell us a lot about the UFO phenomenon. So I think finding out uh, the locations of these sightings and the uh, an accurate look at the global distribution of UFOs could be very important to understanding uh, why they are here and what they are doing. Uh, that's, you know, it seems like a good thing to know, right? Seems like a good thing to know. So I, I salute New Fork for releasing this information, but I do think that we need more accurate information, particularly when it comes to, uh, you know, international uh, sightings. So, but let me know what you think in the comments below. And if you've enjoyed this video, please give me a big thumbs up. I sure appreciate it. Smash the subscribe button and the bell to be notified of future videos. You don't miss a thing. Join me on social media, Facebook and Twitter links are below. I'd love to see you guys there. Also a discord link if it's still active. And if you wanted to support Cosmic Road in a bigger way, please consider becoming a channel member. See the first link in the description below. Channel members are rock stars and I really appreciate you guys support. Thank you. Also, channel members frequently get to see videos hours or even a day ahead of everybody else. So see the first line in the description below. You can also buy a coffee mug or a t-shirt to see the merch store below. Meanwhile, there are plenty of other videos on the channel. And I'll see you guys next time. This is Jack with Cosmic Road signing out. <music>